Hello and welcome to this video, Confluence Cloud Tutorial for Beginners. We're going to talk about the Atlassian product Confluence today. Uh, my name is Michael Roberts. I'm a vice president here at SPK and Associates. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, first of all, what is Confluence? Uh, the term is uh, sometimes used but not defined. So let's talk about what Confluence is. Confluence is a wiki, and a wiki is a web-based tool that can be used by educators, students, folks in a, in a business, uh, staff to work collaborative, collaboratively uh, to create materials, resources, how-to documents, documentation, and presentations. And Confluence allows you to edit a web page using nothing more than a web browser. So let's talk about some common Confluence terms, some terminology that you'll hear, especially as we walk through this demonstration of Confluence. So the first thing that you're going to hear is pages. Pages are where your content lives. These are living documents that you create on your Confluence site. You can create Confluence pages for almost anything from project plans to meeting notes, troubleshooting guides, policies, knowledge-based articles, and a lot of other different things. Confluence comes with uh, bundled templates, which you can install and are very useful to how you operate inside of Confluence. These templates can be used for different things. Different templates can apply to different situations and, and different product payer, different pages in your Confluence site. Spaces are the next area, and this is where pages are grouped together. And spaces are, are workspaces where you can collaborate on work, um, keep all the work that you're working on organized, and however that may be. Uh, whatever your organization strategy is, uh, is the is the best way to group your spaces. For example, one marketing team may keep all of its work in one space with a page for each campaign, while another may actually create a separate space for each single campaign. So there is no hard and fast rule. And then the last part is a page tree or, or a side menu in some instances, uh, the way may pe people may look at it. And page trees are... Uh, the, the, where content lives in a hierarchical structure. So that page tree is where you see uh, normal views on the left-hand side, and you can understand how different pages are associative to other hierarchical uh, pages. So let's jump into Confluence and talk about different versions. And this is a, this is a pretty interesting um, uh, need to understand because this will actually uh, be the reason why the demonstration that I may show may have some differences from what your Confluence version may be. Um, so there are uh, really two types of on-prem uh, versions of Confluence and versions of the software. There's a server version and a data center version, and they're very similar code bases. They are downloadable pieces of software that can be installed on physical, virtual, or cloud infrastructure that you, the Atlassian customer, operate. Confluence server is going away in uh, February of 2024, and you can no longer buy the server edition of that software. Um, you can only purchase a uh, data center for on-premise on software needs. So alternatively, Atlassian has a uh, cloud instance, which is a software as a service solution or a SaaS solution. And the demo we'll show in just a moment, we'll be using the Atlassian Cloud option. And there are many benefits to Atlassian Cloud uh, over data center, and we're not going to cover that in this video. But just note that there are differences to uh, what I'll be showing you in the Confluence Cloud version versus an instance that you may be using that is server or data center. So why Confluence? Why wouldn't you use something else like Google Docs or Microsoft 365? Well, there's a few key points to uh, why you would do that. First, Confluence integrates with other Atlassian tools like Jira, Bitbucket, and this allows for really seamless integration um, for product teams so that they understand and know where things live, know where documentation lives. And that's a huge benefit. That's probably the number one driver of why people use Confluence over something else. Confluence also makes it easier to organize and tag and manage documents than maybe some of the other document management uh, type of solutions. Where did I leave that word document? Where is this Google Doc type thing? Um, Confluence also has a, a wide range of features that are aimed towards developers, which make it a really good fit for technical documentation. So you can embed things like you can embed code snippets, you can pull in information from Jira, uh, which allows you to, to see things in a snippet without having to get into all of the information that may be in Jira that could be overload to people that, that don't need to see all of that. 
And then the other thing, um, using Confluence doesn't mean that you don't use Google Docs or Microsoft 365. There are actually ways to embed those documents or links to those documents inside of Confluence. So it actually, in some ways, helps you organize and you can use those tools collaboratively. It's not a Confluence or another, another tool. So let's jump into Confluence and actually show you guys a demo. So uh, this is Confluence Cloud, and uh, the, this is the, the default homepage of Confluence. So there are already some things here, and we'll walk through kind of what those are. Um, this gives you uh, your, your information and kind of is your, your personal area. And uh, notice this says go to personal space. So with each Confluence user, you have your own personal space. Remember, a space is a, just a collection of pages. So in my personal space, I do have a couple things. Um, these are recently uh, created uh, documents. And so here's a meeting notes page. And this is actually a template that I uh, that I installed here. And so you, you can see some of the uh, graphics and text that are already listed here. Um, but I'm just going to go back to my, my home page here, my personal page. And this shows some of the more recent activity. These are examples of pages that were recently created or recently updated. And then what I'm going to do is go to the home screen. And this also has other spaces that either I may be associated with or my, I may have been in recently. So this is really valuable if you are working collaboratively with a team uh, or a group of another, another group of people where you need to organize content. And so what we'll do is we'll create a new space and we're going to create a space that's designed because I am part of a, pro a product team. So let's go into spaces. Let's create a new space. Um, because it's a software uh, project, I'm going to create a software project space, but note that you can do these different types of spaces, documentation, knowledge base, you can create something that is just blank. So I'm going to start with one that's for a project space. I click next. Um, it allows me to connect to JIRA if I wanted to. Um, we're just going to leave that as it is for right now. Um, we'll, uh, we'll select a, uh, an existing product uh, project that is a mobile device. And we're going to give it a, a key, and a key is a required field. This will be used for um, uh, parts of the links and whatnot, so it is best to keep it very short and very unique. Um, it, by default, puts something in there that is unique, so you don't even need to worry about it. If you want to put a description, you can do that. Let's see, space for our team. And then the default permissions can be easily uh, applied. It'll be the default, but you can also create spaces that have different permissions or just visible to you. So we're going to create that space, and when it's created, it's going to drop me right into the home page of that space. And because I selected a certain type of, uh, of confluent space, it actually comes with uh, some templates and some, some organization already pre-completed. So, for example, this has um, a connection to JIRA. So this is actually going to pull out uh, the, the roadmap based upon the tasks that are in JIRA and actually show the JIRA tasks which is very valuable because now I have the ability to see uh, the project without having to go inside of JIRA per se. I can see it at a very high level. Um, so this is a page, for example. Let's say we wanted to create a new page. We could literally just create uh, or click the create button at the top. That will create a new page. Let's say we have a meeting and I would like to um, apply a, uh, there should be a meeting template here, uh, all hands meeting. So we're just going to apply this template. And that applies all the things that are in the template to this page. And I'm going to put today's date on it. Today is the 7th of December. And I'll just name the page that. So I could put my notes in here. I could put whatever happens in the meeting, our goals and OKRs, our metrics, so on and so forth. You don't have to use these templates, but sometimes they're very helpful to uh, provide something that's meaningful and valuable. And when I'm done, um, I would click publish, but I just want to show a couple quick things, some of the things that you can do inside of Confluence. These are, to me, the uh, the real important. Now, obviously, you have the bold and italics, and you can change the text color and so on and so forth and bullets and whatnot. Uh, basic formatting options. To me, this is really where the power of Confluence comes. And it's all these additional um, uh, items. So let's say I would like to include this info panel. And that actually includes uh, kind of the same thing as here. It includes this little blue box with an icon. I have the ability to change the icon and the color. 
so that I can highlight and, and annotate certain things and block certain pieces of text off. I can change the color of those things. And here's another way I can just delete it and get rid of it. Um, another thing that you can do is you can insert, insert a Google Doc or a Office 365 Doc as well. Um, you can create these expanding um, sections, which will allow you to uh, have larger text here. And when I click publish, this option will be a expandable section, which allows you to consolidate a lot of text under one title. So again, there's so many different features inside of that. And when you're done, you click publish and it will be a published web page. You can share this, uh, this link with people. You can do it a bunch of different ways. Uh, there are, you can actually tag people in the, in the Confluence page that sends them an alert when they are tagged. Um, there's so many beneficial areas here. So that's pages and templates. I want to show you probably the most powerful thing of Confluence. And Atlassian does this with Jira, Confluence, and several of their other products. Um, by using the control and slash keys on your keyboard, you can bring up a, oh, sorry, I got to be in edit mode. You bring up these help areas, which, which show you all these shortcuts. And the cool thing about these keyboard shortcuts is you can use them uh, very quickly without having to, to move to your mouse to do things. So for example, these headings, if I want to uh, apply these headings, control alt three will apply heading three to a piece of text. So if I wanted to make a piece of text uh, as the heading three. I just select that and I click my control alt three, or if I wanted to make it a heading two, control alt two or control alt one. And you can see the text changes just based upon me clicking those keys together. Um, the, uh, the, the value of those shortcuts is it'll allow you to, will allow you to be very fast in terms of typing and formatting the pages that you want to create. So that's uh, Confluence in a nutshell, and that shows you the basic features. It is extremely valuable for integration with uh, Jira and other Atlassian products, uh, but that's all we're going to cover today. Hopefully you found that valuable. Thanks.